There's been a bit of AMD news recently, as Vega is around the corner. I believe, what is it, Vega's launching in June, supposedly? No, wait, they say it's going to launch May 30th. That's the current rumor. Don't get mad at me if it doesn't happen. AMD has unveiled new details about their highly anticipated family of Vega enthusiast grade graphics cards, which are only a couple months away. The company held a technology summit in China earlier this month. Details from the event have been trickling in since, but we finally have actual footage from the event. AMD's RX Vega graphics cards to come in 8GB and 4GB HBM2 configurations. The first new tidbit that has been confirmed by AMD's VP and General Manager of Gaming, Scott Hergelman, is that the company's add-on board partners will have the freedom to configure Vega graphics cards with different memory capabilities. The specific examples that he gave at his talk were 4GB and 8GB memory capacities using HBM stacks with varying densities. Think H2, think 2 high, 4 high, and 8 high stacks. So it's like, I mean, it's pretty obvious what it just said, but think of it like Legos. You put one Lego down, you put another Lego on top of it, and another Lego, and another Lego, and you stack it that way. So one gigabyte of memory per layer. Thanks to previous media events, we know that AMD's high-end Vega chips measure somewhere around 500 square millimeters and features two HBM2 stacks. This means that depending on the type of HBM2 stack used, this particular chip can be configured with 16 gigabytes, 8 gigabytes, or 4 gigabytes of second generation high bandwidth memory. AMD hasn't confirmed the name of this particular chip, but it is believed to be Vega 10. Well, that's good to know. At least, like, I was sitting there worried thinking like, oh man, they can only do 8 gigabytes of HBM2, but knowing they can do 16 seems a whole lot more interesting. This get like, uh, I'm a little excited, a little bit. I've got a slight erection, I hope you don't mind. That's what I tell women when I'm on a date with them, and then they're like, I do mind, check please. And that's the end of the date. The smaller Vega 11 GPU will in all likelihood feature a single HBM stack to minimize the interposer footprint which is advantageous on a multitude of facets. A smaller interposer is cheaper to produce, yields are significantly better, and smaller overall packaging is more desirable for mobile GPUs. Vega is coming to notebooks. Oh, well that explains it. Vega is coming to notebooks. This brings us to our next point. Scott Herkelman confirmed that Vega will indeed be available in notebooks in some form or another, although not much detail has been revealed here, although we do know for a fact that Raven Ridge APUs, which features Vega-based integrated graphics, will in fact be available on notebooks. It's also possible that the Vega 11 GPU with a single HBM2 stack will also be available as a dedicated high-performance GPU for gaming and professional workstations and notebooks. Finally, Scott Hokelman concluded that his 18-minute talk by professing his excitement for the Vega, which he stated multiple times, is only around the corner, and announcing that AMD will be sharing more and more demos of Vega as we get closer to launch. It can't come soon enough because this shit is taking fucking forever. This is all stuff we've covered before. Uh, Vega's architecture, four times more powerful, four times more power efficient, Supposedly, Vega's going to be 250 watts, and Fiji was 275 watts. Don't know how that <laughs> translates to power efficiency, or maybe it'll be less than 250 watts. Two times peak throughput performance per clock, high bandwidth cache, two times bandwidth per pin, eight capacity, eight times the capacity per stack, second generation HBM2. Why did I say that like that? 512 terabytes of virtual address space, which is a little bit more than the 1080 Ti's 480. Uh, next generation compute engine, which does seem promising if you've paid attention to previous talk about Vega. Next generation pixel engine, next generation compute unit optimization for higher clock speeds, rapid pack math, that's another good one, drawstream binning, rasterizer, and primitive shaders. Don't let the term primitive shaders fool you, which it has done to me. I sit there and go, why would they call it primitive shaders? It makes me think it's shit. So here's hoping that Vega does deliver. I really do, and hopefully HBM2 will be more kick-ass than I'm already perceiving, because we've already been over this before, where DDR5X, the revision that NVIDIA's been working on, is already pretty damn close to HBM2, if not faster at some points. And also keep in mind that DDR5, uh, sorry, DDR6 is in the works. NVIDIA's working on that, so that should be something we might see sometime in the near future. And it all makes me question I don't know. It all makes me think like DDR5, I'm sorry, GDDR6 makes me there go, okay, when is that coming? How amazing will it be? What, how much ass is it going to kick? Will it be compatible? Well, obviously it will be. 
with uh, PC Express 4.0, which was supposed to have debuted by now, but it hasn't, weirdly enough, which I don't know, I'm surprised. For those of you who don't know, uh, PC Express 4.0 will be backwards compatible with PCI Express 3.0 graphics cards. So let's say for some reason, I don't know, it just falls out of the sky and PCI Express 4.0 is a thing immediately, just out of the blue. You wouldn't have to worry about the graphics cards you have now. But future graphics cards that support 4.0 wouldn't be usable on 3.0, if you don't know or care. So it's probably like useless information you really don't give a ball's dick about because PCI Express 4.0 isn't exactly being talked about right now at PC. Uh, PC Express 4.0 delay may empower next gen alternatives. PCI Express 4.0 is already overdue. Now, the specification of the latest delay combined with a slew of competition. So, we're pushing PCI Express to 2018 or whatever. Uh, I'm not going to delve any deeper because that's a lot more speculation and you're probably not here to hear about Express 4.0. So, let me move on. Oh, AMD has had like a couple other leaks, by the way. Uh, I'm pretty sure most of you have heard about the. 16, 16 core 32 thread, uh, what was it, X390 platform, which is supposed to compete with Intel's X99 platform, from what I understand. Well, now there's also going to be a 12 core 24 thread, supposedly. But actually, it seems like these leaks can be trusted. So, not supposedly, this is something legit. Uh, today, we share the details of a yet unannounced Ryzen CPU with 12 cores which is most likely be being planned for AMD's HEDT X390 platform. So, the author of this does say he will state by saying that the machine detected with this CPU is an Alienware Area 51 R3. The R2 version, which shipped with the Broadwell 6800 slash the 6850K processors. We already heard that AMD is working on a 16 core chip, but the processor has only 12 cores. This means that we are no longer looking at one product, but a whole new series of products. This is the chart made by the author to give you all the details at a glance. Most interesting details, it's not a server chip. It has a new socket and turbo clock to 3.2. The good news is that this is a second generation engineering sample, but not yet a qualification sample. We are probably a few weeks before seeing a QS. So engineering sample, grain of salt, it's turbo boosted at 3.2. Engineering samples basically, odds are if you're listening to this or watching this, you already fucking know. But the engineering sample is kind of like a baseline, meaning like, uh, all right, it's only a 3.2 right now. As time progresses, when we finally get a consumer version, there's a shot it could get up to 4.0. I don't see 4.0 being too crazy of a, an idea of how far it could go. I think it could hit a 4.0. I mean, I think Windle had a 58. 20k or something like that or 20x i can't remember it was one of the uh x99s before the 600 the 6800k and i think he was rocking like 4.5 gigahertz on that thing or 4.2 so seeing 4.0 on this is very possible and considering the ryzen chipset can already hit 4.0 well the 1800 x is guaranteed well that should do it for me uh, i've wasted enough of your time today I can't actually give more of a fuck than me, because fucks are very rare in this day and age. Rate, comment, subscribe if you so choose to. Share if you like. If not, no big deal. Remember, Twitch, Twitter, and all the other stuff. I should probably stream on Twitch more often, but I find when I do stream on Twitch, nobody really watches. And apparently, Twitch is important to companies now. They're like, how many Twitch followers do you have? And I'm like, what does it fucking matter? Like, I'm not really a Twitch streamer. I'm not the type of guy to turn on the camera and go, Whoa! Look out there, Billy! <laughs> Oh my god! You know, I'm not gonna bullshit somebody. I don't get that excited even when I'm having sex with an attractive woman. Why should I believe this motherfucker is that excited over a video game? Come the fuck on! Oh god, I got too real. Damn it!